Hello, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, I will explain how you can use Excel to test an investment strategy using a Monte Carlo simulation. And in order to implement the Monte Carlo simulation, I will show you how you use the table, uh, data table function from Excel. And I will illustrate this by implementing a constant mix strategy and evaluate its performance over eight years. So let's get started. So a Monte Carlo simulation is essentially drawing returns from a normal distribution. This starts with the rand function in Excel. The rand function in Excel draws numbers from a uniform distribution between zero and one. That's not a normal distribution. So in order to create a normal distribution, I'm going to use the norm inf function that feeds on this probability, which essentially becomes a cumulative probability. I need a mean for this distribution and a standard deviation. And this will essentially generate my first number drawn from a normal distribution. Cool. So we can improve on this function a bit by nesting it. We don't need to have the random numbers separately shown. So I'll plug it in here. And, you know, a nice bit of formatting would also help. And of course, and not the least, we want to have this number in eight years, because in the end, we're going to test this on um, a strategy of investing in a constant mix, investing um, 1000 euros in a 40, 60% mix of stocks and bonds. So at the start of this experiment, I start with um, a number of thousand and my allocation to stocks is equal to this 40% times the capital I had. And of course the amount in bonds is thousand minus the amount in stocks. And see, I do everything with formulas, so we can change the experiment without having to retype a lot of things. Next, of course, um, I need to make sure that the returns are in the right place, so they should be here. I <laughs> mistakenly put them in column C, but they should be in column B. In column C, I'm going to present the value of the capital, and at the end of period one, the value of the capital is equal to the stock market position times one plus the stock market return plus the bond market position times one plus the bond market returns. And in this case, I assume that's the risk-free rate. So at the end of the period, we have a thousand euros, thousand ten euros and 24 cents. And you know, that means I need to reallocate and I'm copying this to the other eight periods as well. And so this is essentially the outcome of a Monte Carlo scenario with um, eight periods, eight years, annual rebalancing and a stock bond mix of 40, 60. And in this scenario, I end at 1813. Each time I press the F9 button, it recalculates. So in this case, I end up with 1500, 1600. These are good years. Finally, 1400, 1300. Cool. So good strategy. So, but you know, how many s scenarios do you want to run? Well, a lot, I guess. And to help you with that, you can use this data table function that is available in data what if analysis data table. And this creates a table of all simulation outcomes. And so it makes sense to use the first column for the scenario numbers. So you can tr keep track of the scenarios. And in the bottom row of this table, you put in references to um, the outcomes of the model. So for instance, I may want to know the last value of um, the capital. And I may also want to know the geometric mean return of 
the stock returns. I put that in here, so this is equal to one plus right and so the top row of my scenario table uh, refers to outcomes of the model I make the outcomes yellow so these yellow things are linked and what i simply want to do is that excel presses a lot of times f9 for me and collects the yellow values from the model into this table and this is what we're going to do with this uh, data table function. So let's have a look. So select data, select what if analysis, and then important here to select the column input cell. This is essentially um, in the top row, the left cell. And it's here called a column input cell, but you can ignore its meaning. You need to sell, select at least the column input cell, uh, the most left. Uh, column head. And here we have a go, all possi possible outcomes. So let's round them off to two decimals. That's already more than enough. And we can, you know, calculate all kind of interesting stuff like the average. What is the average capital over these 100 scenarios? And let's also do the average geometric mean return. That appears to be zero. That's ah, six point. Right, um, so this is one way of doing it. And you know, um, when you press F9, it reruns the full experiments, including 100 scenarios. What I use as a typical rule of guidance, how many scenarios do you need? Well, when the first two or three different digits of the model of the outcomes don't measure, change too much. And now the capital on average is 1574. So 157, these are the first three digits. Wow, 149, that's different, 153. So probably to get stable outcomes, I should add more scenarios. I'm not doing this here, it takes too much time. But this gives you a crude idea on how this function works in Excel.